So I'm going to show you two different ways to finish this up. And the first way is paint. Um, before you get ready to paint, just want to make sure that you dried everything off and um, that everything is nice and clean because you don't want any of the dust from sanding to get into your paint. Because once it dries in there, you won't be able to get it back out. <laughs> so just take a minute and make sure everything's clean or at least uh, dust free and we're good to go. Also don't use the same water you used for sanding because it's also got the little sanding particles all up in it and you don't want that in your paint or clogging up your brushes so just get new water. So um, the paint we're going to use is, or at least the paint I'm going to use, you can use whatever you want. I'm going to use um, Turner Acryl Gouache. I use this for most of my sculptures and, um, you know, polymer clay stuff. I also use it to do actual paintings with. It is perfectly matte, absolutely, completely flat, no sheen to it whatsoever, except for the metallic colors and these pearl colors going to use these colors to paint it. I uh, probably won't use all of them. Just I plan to use the Prussian blue down here. The other one is also blue. And like I said, I made this well, both of them for a sculpture. And I'm not sure which one I'm going to use yet, but I want to just stick with the color scheme of the blue. So I'm going to paint it blue, but since I did this one metallic, I'll do this one in the matte paint unless I decide I don't like it. Then. So I've got um, this indigo pearl just in case, or just in case I might want to just highlight it a little. Um, the silvers, that should be pretty obvious, that's for the blade. And I'll show you how I'm going to do that. This is um, Japanesque blue-black. Um, the Japanesque line just means that the color has got like a gritty kind of a texture, which really isn't that important for this. But um, I like the color and it's a nice dark color without being black. So in case I need to do a little bit of, you know, shading in here, which I think I did a little bit here, but not a lot. I don't remember what color I used. Actually, I might have used Prussian blue for the shading in this one. So, um, pearl white, um, I may or may not use this one, just figured I'd take it out just in case. Um, and that's it. So, got my little detail brushes that I use for, well these are pretty much strictly used for um, my sculptures, polymer clay work and things like that. I don't use these for actual painting, this either. This is another one that's strictly for this kind of stuff. So, let me stop talking and go ahead and get started. There's really not much to it. Probably don't even need to watch me do this, but in case you're interested, I will go ahead and show you. Gonna start with the antique silver. I mean, you can start with a handle if you want to. I'm just gonna start with this. Um, actually, let me squish it around a little bit. Haven't used it in a while, so sometimes you might just need to shake them or squish them around in the tubes just to make sure everything is still, um, you know, just so it hasn't settled. I know sometimes people think that when they squeeze paint out and if it um, comes out clear or it just looks a little weird, they think it's something wrong with the paint or that the paint's bad quality. And it's not that, it's just the pigments in the paint have separated from the binder a little since it's been sitting for so long. So, you know, like salad dressing, if you let it sit, everything settles to the bottom and then it's just a whole lot of nothing up top. So if you just shake it and squish it around a little bit, everything mixes back in together. 
There you go. Just this dries really, really fast. So I'm just this is just a little silicone cup. No, I'm just gonna put out a fairly small amount. Could have actually stirred that a little bit better. It's still pretty clear. That's a little bit better. A little bit. <laughs> So all that clear stuff is the binder that holds the pigments together. And you see it's a whole lot of binder, only a little bit of the pigments in there. So that one really probably should be stirred up a little bit better. So I'm just going to stir this right here. And really, if you've got something this thin, you can actually stick it into your tube of paint and do the same thing. Just kind of stir it around. And then you can, like, this is just a, this is actually just a knitting needle <laughs> that I bought specifically for using with sculptures. It's actually a really nice sculpting tool. You can get it into little small areas that some of the bigger sculpting tools can't get into. And as you can see, I also use them for paint sticks because they're aluminum, so you can easily just wipe them clean before your paint dries all over it and you're good to go. Oh. All right, so let me see if that's going to be a little too goopy. Might be too much binder and not enough pigment. Might have to just mix it in the tube and then go back. Okay, I'm just going to use this big old brush, big in comparison to the sword anyway. And I'm going to cover the entire thing. Oh, looks like we're good. Okay just to get it covered and just follow the length of the blade. It's better to do it that way than trying to do it this way because then you might get little brush strokes going that way. And then I'll do this side. Just be careful, don't get too much down there. You don't want it to puddle. And be careful not to get since this is a little more watery, since there was so much more binder in it than normal, um, just be careful not to get any bubbles if you're using a more watery paint, which this typically isn't, but like I said, I should have stirred it up a little bit better. Um, other paints you can use for this, because really you can use whatever you like, but another paint that I like to use for this because it has nice metallic colors is Deco Art um, Dazzling Metallics, which you can get at pretty much any craft store. And Deco Art Extreme Sheen. They're both really good true metallics, not things that say metallic, but they're really just kind of glittery or pearlescent. So, I'm gonna let that dry a little bit. It shouldn't take too, too long. And um, I'm going to stir this up a little bit more, just in case I think I need a second coat. Probably won't. Usually with this paint, you only need one coat. But since I didn't mix it well, I might need another. So I'm going to just let this dry, and then I'll see. Don't leave paint on your brush, ever, if you're not painting with it. Rinse it, dry the brush off, lay it down. Don't leave it in the water either. There we go. That's much better. All right, just a little bit of paint like that. Still gonna stir it a little bit. Make sure everything's mixed in. And then um, with this paint, you're also supposed to add a little bit of water to it. Not a lot. Just a little bit. It gives you the exact ratio on the bottle, but I usually just eyeball it, get it to the right consistency. Again, nothing special. Watch your brush. 
and um, just want to do the wrappings. And since mine has that diagonal here, remember, I'm just going to paint it on that stain, the diagonal, and just flip it. <laughs> and see, it's nothing too difficult about it, I'm not doing anything crazy. No crazy detail, really, because you can, but I know for my sculpture, when he's done, it's going to be, the sword's going to be in his hand, so you're not going to see a lot of this anyway. So I'm not going to go ultra detailed here. But if you want to, then go ahead and do it. And I can see it's already starting to dry a little. I went a little out of the lines down here. You can see it right there, but it doesn't matter because the other color will cover it up. The silver will cover that right up, so it won't matter. that dry a little teeny bit, I'm gonna go ahead and take the silver, shake this one up too, because I know I haven't used this one in a while either. Sometimes if you just bang it, cap down on the table, all the pigments will fall down and then you can mix them up a little bit better. Okay, just use this to add like a little bit of water to it. Have a lot. Oh, you water drop. What the heck? Okay. Not a lot, just enough to make it a little more flowy. Don't want to put too much water in it. If you put too much water in your paint, not just this one, but any paint, put too much water in acrylic paint, it starts to kind of fall apart. <laughs> The particles don't bind together anymore and it makes it harder for it to stick to whatever you're trying to get it to stick to whether it's a canvas or anything else you'll actually see it the little particles will kind of clump up and try to dissolve into nothingness so all right this is dry already so I don't know if you can see the difference Let's see doesn't look um, shiny anymore. It's all gone. And now you can see the lines better now that it's dry. And I like that because then um, it looks more like cloth. You know, I went with the metallic look over with the other one, so. I'm still gonna take my little tiny brush and um, I just wanna paint this little area here and then the one down here with the crystal silver not using the antique silver like I did up top this is just the regular silver so just try not to get it on your bead if you do just hurry up and wipe it off because otherwise it will stick to it it's like actually if you wanted to change the color of any of your metal pieces this paint will actually paint over the middle without any problem there we go so obviously it's not a perfect match to it this is much lighter so if I wanted to I could just paint the whole thing that way this part will match the bead I haven't decided if I want to do that or not. Yeah, I like that better. Just do that. Get a little 
quick. And if you do this and then decide you don't like it, you can either try to hurry up and wipe it off before it dries and you don't have much time to do that because it does dry really fast. Because this is actually already starting to dry. I'm going over it again just because with it being metal, sometimes when you drag the brush across it, you end up pulling some of the paint back off if you don't put it on thick enough. So you might just have to do more than one little mini coat. Yep. All right, that's covered. And just make sure you give it time to dry sometimes before you put another coat on. Because if you don't and the paint starts to get a little tacky, like it's trying to dry, and then you run back over it with a paintbrush, you will lift the paint back up and have to patch it back in again. So I'm just going to let that alone so that can dry. And while that's doing that, I just move on to another section. And then by the time I'm done down here, that should be finished. So, I could have also painted that, like for example, if I wanted it, there to be some gold details, I could have painted it gold. But um, I'm trying to just stick with a kind of blue and silver. I don't want that on my crystal. So if that happens, just get another little teeny brush and wet it. And then you can just pull it off just like that. Swipe at it and wipe it off and it comes right off. Just make sure you do it while it's wet because once it's dry you might not be able to get it back off. Not really worried about little areas where I went down into my blue. Because I can just paint back over it. It's not a problem. I should have been painting with this one to begin with. This one is even itty bittier. So I'm actually going to use this little teeny one. Get that water dropper off of there. Might want to keep like a little spray bottle around and then you can mist your paint. To make sure it doesn't dry while you're doing other things. And so I'm just going to touch up that little area where the silver went down into it. The silver's already dry enough that I can go over it. And now that this silver part up top is dry, if I want to go over that again, I can just give it another quick coat. Try to make sure you don't put too much paint on at a time. Because if you put your paint on too thick, you'll start to see the brush strokes. Oops. <laughs> Slipped. Put it right on the crystal. This is another reason why if you're not really very comfortable with painting, you might want to just glue your crystals on afterwards if you decide to use any. That way you don't have to worry about getting the paint on them. Okay. But, eh, I'd rather just get it over with. Have it all done when it's baked. And all I got to do is paint. I'm just going to put this up here, painting mine silver, but you can paint it whatever you want. It doesn't have to match your metal pieces. You can make a color completely different. Over here. Now I'm going to switch to this little brush just to get into this little tighter area. Alright. 
Okay, here's where we are with this. I decided it needed a little bit more blue because it just seemed like it was just too silver. So I just added a little bit more blue in here. I decided to go ahead and paint part of the metal. This side doesn't look as nice. I have to touch this up, but you get the idea. Okay, and I did um, go over the blade of the sword again with the antique silver just to make sure I had good coverage. Yeah, it's dry. So, um, also dry. <laughs> or is it just cold? But anyway, so I just wanted to add those. Um, on the metal part, I haven't decided yet if I like the contrast between the shiny and the matte or if I'm going to take some of this um, pearl indigo and go over it just to add a little bit of a shine to it. I'll figure it out afterwards. So if your silver hasn't dried up yet, has mine dried up yet? Let's see. Nope, it's still usable. Just put a little bit of water in it, not too much. No surprise, it's still still getting going by now. Okay. So now I'm just going to paint, move this out of the way so I can get that. Pick a side and paint it. Right along that bevel. If you think it's a little too bright, just keep going over it like I am. It'll kind of pull the paint further up and stretch it out a little so it makes it a little bit more translucent. And just try to get it as straight as you can in the middle. Doesn't have to be perfect because if it's not, just go back over whatever, like that little mistake I just made. I can just go back over that with the antique silver. And then just don't forget to make sure you get paint on the edge. Sometimes you miss it. And just make sure you go back too so that you can um, make sure that the paint isn't building up on the side you've already done. Sometimes if you're pushing on it this way, it might clump up. So just smooth it back out. Okay, and then, of course, you're gonna need to do the other side. Make sure you do the same side. So I did this side, so when you flip it, and now it's this side. So I'm just gonna flip this this way so it's a little easier to get to. Oh. Paint is starting to dry a little bit over here. I can feel it. And that's it. Looks pretty good. And if you feel like you need another coat, or if you want to touch it up in some spots so that it's really smooth. many or as little on it as you want. And also try to paint in the same direction. So you see I'm going from the bottom to the top because these paints, these metallic ones have um, mica powder in them which gives them their shine. So you want all of the little mica crystals to be facing the same direction. If you paint back the opposite direction, you might notice that it looks um, probably a little darker because you've flipped some of those little mica particles the other direction. So they still shine, but not as the same, not the same way as the 
rest of them do since it's facing a different direction. It's reflecting the light a little bit differently. It's also why if you ever work with metallic polymer clay and you slice it, if you notice that the cut edge is usually darker than the surface, that's why, because you forced all of the little particles in that area to face a different direction. And so now they're reflecting the light in a different way than all the rest of them. So try to push them in the same direction if you can. Okay. And if you notice that as you're painting, you're starting to, instead of it getting darker, it's starting to lighten up or go back to the color that's underneath. It means that you need to stop because your paint's starting to dry and you're just pulling it back off again. So you just have to stop, let it dry completely, and then if you want to go back over it again, you can. Okay, so you just need to wait for it. Okay. So there's that. You can see it a little bit. Okay. Same thing. Just take a little dab. Oh, look, one that's cooperating. And you just go to all the little lines. Paint your darker line in quotes. And it'll just um, bring out whatever design you put there. If you decided to put one there, you might have left it plain. So in which case, you won't have to do this. And um, the way I'm holding the brush, see it's like way down towards the tip it just gives you a little bit more control instead of you trying to hold it towards the back it just keeps it more steady if while you're doing this if it starts to look like everything is too dark from you just filling these lines in, it might make the color look a lot darker than you wanted. Um, you see mine got a lot darker. All you really need to do is, um, you can, there's a couple options. You can either get a lighter color than you started with and just kind of lightly dust over it in some spots. Not too heavy, like don't wanna like actually like you're painting it do it almost with a sort of dry brush and just kind of lightly go over it because that way it'll skip over the lines and just hit your original color and um, if you don't want to lighten it up that much because that will do it a little bit you could also just go back to your original color and just kind of dab it back on top not where your lines are but you know the actual spaces. You can just dab it back in there and it'll bring back some of the original color without undoing all of the work you did on the lines. Okay. And then too, you can just wait for it to dry because it will look really dark while it's still wet. But once it's all dry, it may not be quite as bad as it seems. So just let it dry first, and then you can decide if you want to go back in with another color or not. The other option is, too, you can um, kind of dab over it with the metallic color, and that'll make it shine a little if you wanted that. And I'm just gonna use this to put a little bit of shine. Oops. <laughs> just to add a little bit of shine to the metal part. Just 
you because Just to see if I like it. I mean, because I kind of like the contrast with the matte and the shiny, but I can just do a little just to see how I like it. And you don't have to paint in the whole thing if you don't want to. You can just dab it just on the ends. I'm just going to go ahead and do that a little bit towards the edges. The inner one, I think I kind of just painted the whole thing, but so no sense I did that already. I'll just make sure I do it again. But the other ones, I'm just kind of putting it a little bit more just on the edges. So I still have a little bit of the matte. Yeah, I think I like that. This part, so decided to see what it would look like if I just go ahead and paint it blue. Let's try not to get it on the crystal. I wasn't gonna paint this blue because I didn't want to distract from the crystal, but I'll just go ahead and paint it blue just to see if I like it. If not, I'll just paint back over it again. Nope, don't like it, so I'll paint back over it. Let that dry first. And I'll go back over it. So we'll just flip that over for now and pretend it didn't happen. <laughs> okay, so that looks pretty good. And like I was talking about before, about just um, if you want to just dab a little or skip it a little, just dry your brush off a little and then just kind of lightly rub it against it and the color will come off a bit but um, not a whole lot so you'll get some of the color but it won't be overwhelming and it won't cover up your shadows so you probably can't see it but I can it gives it a very subtle shine yet yeah, the lines still keep that matte look that I wanted and it lightens things up a teensy bit. And then you can go back in and do it again. Want. Until it lightens to the color that you want. You can go over this with a completely different color if you wanted to just see what would happen. Because the way you're doing it, you're just kind of rubbing it this way. So it will skip over the lines and everything. So that will shine through. So you could always see what kind of effects you could get. You can always paint over it. Yep, that works for me. So, like I said, this I'll be pretending that didn't happen by painting that out. Might need some more paint. This should be dry enough. The metallic colors dry pretty quickly. If it's not dry enough, I'll know because the color will mix. I'll just wait again. Got it all down in my blue stripe, not paying attention. And since I'm in this area, I'm also going to take the blue black and um, I want to darken up here. Um, 
where the blade would be inside of this just to put a little bit of a darker shadow here and if it's too dark you can easily blend that out a little by putting more silver on top of it really thin so that way um, the darker color shows through I can also take a little bit of water while it's still wet and kind of blend it in a little and that will make it less of a just harsh line. just getting the brush a little bit wet not a lot and then I'm just kind of pushing up into the blade a bit and the color is stretching up into it and then just kind of fading it out so you can see it's still dark towards the bottom but the line isn't just starkly you know there it's not so blunt Okay. And now I would say that is pretty much that. Besides any little touch ups you want to do, or if anything needs an extra coat like this. ahead and do it. Um, I'm going to show you one more thing. Did I really do that? Um, if you just want to emphasize this bevel even more, besides just painting the one side um, silver and the other side with the antique silver, you could also take your dark color, in my case the blue black, and do something similar to what we did down at the bottom here and just um, take it water it down a little bit so it's not too dark and then you can just kind of take it and run it along the bevel she might be looking like oh no that's too dark what are you doing woman but hold on a sec just put it on the darker side Try to keep it as straight as possible. You can even use your flat brush for this. And do the same thing, just kind of wet it and let it sort of fade out. If you need more water, just go ahead and get it. And pull it kind of towards the edge. And if it's still too dark, you just do it again. See how I'm kind of scrubbing a little back and forth? You can push it. I'm pushing it up towards the areas where it's not quite so dark. And if it's still dark, just a little bit more water and rub directly on it. Do it lightly, that way you don't take too much off because you might end up removing more than you want to. I think I did that a little teeny bit, but you can always put it back if you do. Which is the good part about it, as long as it's still wet, you can work with it but once your paint dries it's there and the only thing you can really do is to paint over it okay so like that and that will add a little bit more so now you can probably see the bevel a little bit but you just don't want it to look like there's a you know a blunt line straight down the middle of your sword so try to feather it out as much as you can so all it takes is a little bit of water just at the very edge of it and then just back and forth very lightly very nice a little bit of shine but not the mirror shine if you want this mirror shine that will be method two and I'm going to show you that 
next. Otherwise, if you want something a little more subtle, just paint it. If you just want this ultra shiny mirror finish, there's a couple ways you can do it. Um, there are paints that will actually do this. That um, extreme sheen paint that I was talking about. If you sand it and everything like it's like you're supposed to, it gives you an actually pretty shiny surface. Um, there's other paints that I know that actually are supposed to give you this mirror finish too. Haven't tried them. Um, but if you just don't want to paint it, here's the method I used. And really, I used this method because um, I think I mentioned before that I didn't sand this one as well as I could have. So when it was painted, it still, um, the paint actually kind of brought out some of the little lumps and bumps that it had more than I would have liked. So I decided um, that I wanted to cover it up. So. This is actually really simple. Remember this tape. <laughs> this is all it is. It's our aluminum foil tape. And the same way we kind of cut it to make the base for our blade, you would do it the same way. So I'm not gonna do it because I think I like this. And since I already have one like this already, but I'll show you anyway. You can do like before and, you know, peel it off and stick it and then trim off the excess or even um, fold it over stick it down so once you get up here to this part where your point starts you're going to want to just take your scissors and clip it and clip it and um, you'll obviously cut it off at the top and then you'll just want to fold it in. You can cut off some of the excess so it doesn't overlap because if it does you'll see it. Once you put the other layer on top you'll see it. So just um, get them to lay next to each other but not necessarily overlap. And then for this side you'll cut it exactly and stick it on top. Stick it on there and then um, you can clip that part later. Like I said, it's the same way we did it when we made the base. And it sticks on and it stays on really good. Just make sure um, you cover, when you do it, you cover your sides really good. And that's what I'm saying, to make sure you kind of fold it over for that first layer. And then the second one can just, you know, for your one side, make sure it folds over to this side. And then when you put your other one on top, it'll cover that up. But just make sure it does cover the sides because this tape, if you remember, is really sticky. So if you don't cover it good, it can the edges can um, still be a little sticky sometimes. And uh, I do have that problem with this one. Like one side is fine, the other side I didn't make sure it was completely covered. So there is like a little bit of the tape glue can um, be felt. But um, it's not that big of an issue because you could also cover this up with something clear and you wouldn't have that issue at all. So also for all of your painted parts, you do probably want to put a clear varnish on there just to protect it from scratching. Um, mine isn't going to be played with or anything since it's for sculpture, but just in case um, you accidentally you know, scratch it with a fingernail or while you're trying to put it into your figure's hand or if you're using it for a ball jointed doll or something. So just be aware of that. You might want to put a varnish on there. Use whatever sheen you want, matte, satin, gloss. It's up to you. But do protect your paint. And for that mirror finish, that's all there is to it. It's just this tape again. 
And um, one more suggestion too, when you are putting the tape down, use something like this to help you burnish it down instead of just your fingers. Using this, um, it actually helps with the shine too, and it helps keep your fingerprints off of it, but it actually helps get a nice um, wrinkle-free surface, especially if you notice you do have any little wrinkles. This will help um, to push them out. Or some other kind of tool like it. You could actually even, if you've got, you know, something like the knitting needle, whoa, you can rub the side of it against it. And it's a quick, easy way to get a nice, shiny surface. The only problem is you may not um, see the bevel you made as easily. So, you know, if you look at it from here, you know, if, like from the top down, you can kind of tell that it's there, but looking at it, you know, like this, you can't really see it anymore. Especially this one didn't have as strong of a bevel as this one did. This one was much, I made this, this one a lot stronger. So it shows up really well. Even the side that we didn't this is the opposite side. I didn't put that um, that line down it yet. So even with this, without that extra paint line for definition, if I tilt it, you can still see that it's there. But this one is a little flatter. So that's that. There they are. That I might work on this one a little bit more, but it is pretty much done. And the only thing I'm really going to do is maybe touch up the lighter silver side and um, just put that other line down the middle just so both sides match. Um, otherwise, down here, I think I'm pretty much done, um, other than maybe a couple little touches, little touch ups. But all the major work is finished, and then I'll get to decide which one of these swords I plan on using when I finally finish this sculpture. I'm still not done. I haven't actually worked on him in a while. I was hoping to have him done by the time this was finished, but that didn't happen. So anyway, thanks for sticking with me through all of these videos.